It's food for thought. Mmm, vegetables. Hey, that's a great idea. With foods and nutrition teacher, Sandy Stratton. I'm in a hurry today. I gotta get to work. Gotta get the kids ready for school. We gotta get some food together. We're all busy these days. Welcome to the Foods Lab here at Stone Park Intermediate School and this is Food for Thought. You know we're all very busy in our lives. We have to get to work. We have to get the kids off to school. But what are we going to do about what we're going to eat today? Does that sometimes take a back seat to our busy lives? I think it does. I want to talk about food, two types of food, there are two types of food, whole foods and processed foods. And when it comes to my lunch and my snacks today, I have to make a decision on the two of them. Which one am I going to have? Maybe make up a little vegetable and dip? Have an apple? Maybe I'll have some Pringles, some crispy minis. I'm not sure. Let's look at the difference between the two before we decide on what we're going to have to eat today. Yes, today's fast-paced life is a busy one. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't take time to eat well. I encourage my students and family to focus on whole foods in their diet that are nutrient-dense rather than highly processed foods that are energy dense. What does that mean? Well, nutrient dense foods provide many healthy nutrients for your body, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals, with low added sugar and fat. Energy dense foods, or high calorie foods, provide many calories or energy with little value to your body other than energy itself with few healthy nutrients like vitamins, fiber and minerals. A whole food could be considered a food with only one ingredient like corn on the cob and apples, chicken or a cucumber, lettuce and fish. These foods will assist you in reducing your cholesterol, regulating your blood sugars and reducing risk for diabetes while also assisting you in maintaining your weight. As I've said, they're high in natural fibers, vitamins and minerals that our bodies need to grow strong and healthy. On the other hand, a processed food is any food with more than one ingredient. Just look at some of these ingredient lists. I'm not even sure what some of these things are. Chances are that they are preservatives of some kind. Generally speaking, processed foods are produced in factories using cooking methods to transform raw ingredients into neat and quick to eat packaged goods, which are usually have a longer shelf life than natural whole foods. Companies typically add additional sugars, and preservatives, dyes, and bad fats such as saturated and trans fats to processed foods. Heavy processing often depletes or removes healthy nutrients and instead concentrates its products with fat, and salt, and those flavors and textures we humans love the most. Remember, most of these companies are looking out for the bottom line or making profits and are not looking out for your health. That's up to us to do. These products are made for our busy lives and so we can prepare them quickly allowing for immediate eating. Disappointingly, many don't offer much in nutritional value. Numerous studies have demonstrated the health advantages of a diet based on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes left in as natural a state as possible. More advantages of whole foods include 
they are rich in phytochemicals, powerful nutrients found in plant foods. Compared with processed foods, whole foods contain more vitamins and minerals. More fiber and beneficial fats are found in whole foods. The combinations of nutrients in whole plant foods act to protect us from disease. Consider some of these reasons to favor whole foods instead of processed foods. A wise person once said, everything in moderation, and that includes processed foods. So try not to send too many processed food items with your child's lunch, and take time to try and include as many whole food snacks as possible. And if they complain that they didn't get their fruit roll up or pudding cup and got an apple or a banana instead, don't give in. Be a good role model and a good parent by continuing to include fruits and vegetables in their lunches as often as possible. They'll be glad you did. Well, I made my decision. I'm going to have a banana and I'm going to have an apple today. I might have a little bit of Pringles. That's okay to have a little bit, as we saw. Well, I have to get going. I'm going to enjoy my banana just before the grade 8 students come in here. We're going to make some homemade chicken noodle soup. Anyway, see you next time on Food for Thought.